Stitchy Tube. Settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. It's time for Stitchy Tube. Number, I think, 13. Is it number 13? Lucky number 13? Might be. Um, it is April 15th. Sunday and I'm hanging out here at home doing a little housework and getting things ready to show you guys uh, I wanted to start as I usually do by answering a few questions that I had from the last stitchy tube video Rhonda Smith wanted to know if I tea or coffee stain my pieces after I stitch them after it's complete I don't always but I do sometimes uh, I like to work with tea and coffee dyed linens. To me, they really replicate the look of old linen because you got to imagine that old linen that samplers are, old samplers are stitched on has a lot of grunge from the centuries that's kind of worked its way into the fabric. And so I like that grunge. Now, the thing is, if you stitch on coffee or tea dyed linen, um, it's the grunge is on the fabric, but it's not on the threads. And a lot of times when you get an old sampler, the grunge is on the threads and the fabric. And so to me, it looks really cool to have that grunge on both parts. Here's the thing to know. Um, it is not archival <laughs> necessarily to coffee and tea dye your, your threads and your fabric. It adds acid to your piece. I like the way it looks. Um, I... I would say, you know, if I had a piece that I considered to be really an heirloom piece, something that I put a few hundred hours into, I don't know that I would do it. Um, but your stitching is yours. You know, what, I guess you have to think about like, what responsibility do you have towards people who might enjoy your piece in the future? Um, I shudder to think sometimes about all the wonderful samplers that are in landfills right now. We don't know what's gonna happen to our stitching after we die. We just really don't. Um, you know, maybe we know a little ways into the future what will happen who will get them but there's no way to know 200 years from now where any of our pieces will be it doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of them i always use acid-free foam core i always use spacers but coffee and tea dyeing your piece either before or after you stitch definitely adds this other component into it that can be harmful to your stitching i showed this piece last time but i just want to show you again um, this is one that i recently tea and coffee stained after i stitched it um, this was one that I started quite a while ago, and I don't know what happened, but I got a few like little kind of marks on the linen somehow. I keep them in a cabinet. I don't know what I don't know what it is. There's just like a little discoloration. So I thought, you know what? I really like the look of the grunge all over. And so this one I dyed with coffee, put it in the oven at 225 for a while, and um, did that a few times actually. Um, I think Vana calls it like baking and basting. I don't know if I use the same exact technique that she does. I need to go back and watch her tutorial and see what she does. I basically just wet it, throw a bunch of, you know, coffee and tea and like I even set tea bags on top of it or rip the tea bags open and throw tea on top of it and just let the grunge fall where it will. I have found that if things get too dark, you can take it out and rinse it really well and get a bunch of it out. I've even put like dish soap on it to wash some of it out. And it, if you catch it before it dries, you can get some of it back out again. But that's, that's the kind of result that I get. Like, I, it's not, I do it sometimes, occasionally, um, depending on the look that I'm going for. I really like this. I, I really like the way it turned out um, because it does have that old, like, kind of grungy look on both the threads and the fabric. Please know that anytime you wet your fabric or your threads, you could get a color bleed. And sometimes that's a good thing and it looks kind of cool and sometimes it's not so great. So just always be careful, um, but it's your needlework. So you do with it what you like and just have fun. Okay, thank you for the question, Rhonda. Uh, I think it's Kate Crafting. I can't read my handwriting. It might be Cart Crafting, Kate Crafting. Um, wanted to know what my process was of finding old samplers to reproduce. I, um, I'm trying to think what year it was, maybe like 2009-ish was maybe the first time I bought a sampler and it was the Ann Harrison um, sampler. And I found it on eBay, paid too much money for it. It wasn't in very good condition. It was in wools. Um, I'll show it sometime in another video, but, um, it, I think I paid $300 for it. And I was like, Oh, I can't believe it. I found an antique sampler. I thought it was like this big rare thing to find an antique sampler. Oh my gosh, look at this. I could, I could afford that. And I bought it and it was, 
the reproduction turned out great. It was super fun. It was a learning process. There are many, 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 many antique samplers for sale. Many, very, ma very much many. And so um, the way I, I just am continually looking on eBay. I look on Etsy too. And um, I actually recently, I bought a sampler last month and I got it recently and I'm gonna show it to you today. Um, I, I just type in antique sampler or old needlework and you just see what pops up. And um, sometimes on eBay, you can get a good buy it now price. Sometimes you bid. Um, I just, to me, what I look for, I'm, is that right, Peaches? I, um, I look for things that look like they're gonna be fun to stitch in pretty colors with interesting motifs. And I, I know I've told you before, I don't like things that are super um, symmetrical. So things that are like lopsided and, you know, not where you're not restitching the same thing over and over and over again. And so um, it's kind of one of those, I know it when I see it kind of things. There are very, very many samplers that I would have loved to have purchased that I either couldn't afford or, or just, you know, it's like, how many samplers do you need? But once in a while, I see one that I'm like, that is really something pretty special. I got, March was my birthday. March 12th was my birthday. And I got money from my parents and my um, in-laws. And then I also got my first YouTube payment, which was pretty cool. So every time you watch my commercials, I get a little bit of money and then I use it for things like this. And so I was on Etsy and I typed in antique samplers and um, a bunch popped up in the store. And I'm going to put a link to the store down here now I can't remember the name of the store something beachy I'll put it I'll put a link down below so they had a bunch of samplers for sale and I saw this one um Polly Fowl is who stitched the sampler and I'll maybe hold it up so you can see maybe I can come closer too so you can really see the the detail here's what I like about this the pale blue is really pretty. And um, it looks like it's stitched in over-dyed threads. You know, well, you gotta figure all this stuff is hand-dyed. Um, there's a really neat st stitch used in the border. I believe that the sampler at one point was probably glued down to something and then cut off because the border is missing a good chunk of the way around. Um, around these, this cartouche here in the center and then these little medallions here, is a, a double chain stitch, which is fun to do. I liked that the letter A is here, B, C, D, and the alphabet continues most of the way around. She didn't quite get all the letters in. At first, looking at it online, I thought they might be initials as they will do sometimes is put initials of people that they love. Um, this is, is that right? Are you gonna cry? Are you gonna cry? Um, this was the alphabet. She, she did the alphabet. It's got little tiny windmills here down by the bottom with little birds with black legs. So pretty. Colors are pretty. Um, this one is very symmetrical for me. I don't normally get things this symmetrical, but I loved this sampler. It is so pretty. Um, the trees, see the central tree motifs are really neat. I just think it's very, very pretty. Very, very just kind of springy, light, summery. Um, just lovely. Just lovely. And so um, when I saw this, I contacted the seller and I said I was interested in it and I wanted to know if they had any information about it. And they said, um, you know, let, let us get back to you. And then I heard from somebody else and they said, oh, this was one of Grandma Shirley's samplers. We have um, a number of her samplers for sale in our shop here. We don't necessarily know a lot of information about it. They did. I'll, I'll do more on this sampler at another time. But anyway, they sent me a little booklet, a copy of a, a booklet that she had kept. Um, uh, Grandma Shirley had a few antique stalls where she worked at antique markets. And then um, she collected samplers because she was a needleworker also. And so um, she loved to collect samplers. The family said she had very, a very good collection of samplers and they kept some of them, but that they didn't have room to display all of them. So they were storing a bunch of them and they didn't feel like Grandma Shirley would have wanted that. They felt like she would have wanted people to be enjoying the samplers. So they kept the samplers that they had special memories attached to and then the others they have up for sale um, or they um, have, have already sold. So this was one of Grandma Shirley's samplers and I will reproduce this um, one 
at a later date, but it's very pretty. So um, it's it, this is a very it's a very long topic. It's a good question. Um, if you guys would like me to do like just a video on how to go about maybe looking for a sampler to buy, things to watch out for, things to consider, price ranges, that kind of thing, I would love to do one for you. Um, I I'm not an expert. I've done it for 10 years almost. Um, I have maybe 20 ish samplers or so, and I can tell you like what to, what to watch out for. But, um, my process is just to keep looking because you never know what you're going to find. If I see samplers that I like, um, a lot of times I'll just throw a picture in my file and just keep it just because the thing is when you see a sampler for sale on eBay, let's say it might be for sale for a week and then it disappears. So it was in somebody's collection. There's a picture that's public for a week and now it's gone. And that person may never show it online again. So you may have like these little tiny windows to see these wonderful samplers. And even if you don't buy them, it is really neat to see them. And um, they do have an antique sampler category on eBay. Uh, I also have purchased from Madalena and I'll put a link to Madalena below as well. And they are a very good purveyor of antique samplers, Staffordshire and a lot of other antiques from England. And there are some very good um, American sellers of samplers as well. Okay, um, a number of people asked me if back over my shoulder, that's Sarah Woodham back there, but back over my shoulder is always a sampler. And, and a couple people have asked, is that Elizabeth Mary Gandy? It is. And so I brought it up closer for y'all to see. This is a sampler I reproduced a number of years ago. And I don't have the original anymore. I did resell it. Um, I love the border. The flowers are like red, white, and blue. So to me, this one is real summery, kind of almost patriotic. And look at how pretty this, this is up here. This little border I think is so, so, so pretty. And the little angel standing on a pedestal holding the, holding the branch. And the verse is very nice. Love God with all your soul and strength, with all your heart and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Be faithful, just, and kind. She was eight years old. There was no date on the sampler. I would put it, you know, somewhere probably 18... 30 to 1860 maybe something like that but very pretty and so um, if you'd like to get a copy of the chart for this one they are available just in a few places you can google around if you want um, Jennifer at my friend Jen at Jen Stitching Niche has them and then Julie at Gulf Coast Stitches has them and I'll put links to both those shops below so that you can get a copy of this chart if you want one it is a chart it's the only chart that I've ever pr had printed as a full like fold out pattern kind of a la lavender and lace where it's a nice big chart I tried it once just to see how it went and um, it was cool um, but it's one I, I don't know if I'll have it reprinted I don't have the file anymore I had a certain number printed and as soon as they're gone I probably that one will probably just be done um, anyway, that's Elizabeth Mary Gandy. Thanks for the questions, guys. Okay, winner of last week's drawing, which was a uh, crocheted doily from the Lucky Rabbit. The winner was Stitching Sunshine. All right, Stitching Sunshine. 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 Uh, contact me either private message on Instagram or private message here on YouTube, and I'll get in touch with you, we'll get your address and I can ship off your, your prize. The question was, what is something that you found a really great deal on somewhere uh, at a thrift store, a flea market, that kind of thing, garage sale? It was super fun, as always, to read your comments. Fun to read about everybody's kind of crazy, amazing finds. There were a few that kind of stood out to me. Somebody said that she went to the Salvation Army and found a bag like overflowing with like 100 skeins or Hanks or what Hank, I don't know, hundred balls and stuff of, of like hand dyed yarns, like really expensive yarns. She said there were like a hundred in this bag and they had $30 on it. They wanted $30. So she took it to the front desk and she was like, this is a really good deal. And they said, we have three more in the back that we haven't put out yet. Do you want those two? And she was like, yes, please. <laughs> and so she got four garbage bags full of hand dyed yarns that she said she divvied up with her friends. For 120 bucks, she said it was like thousands of dollars worth of yarn. Somebody else said that they went to like a flea market and they found um, in baggies, she said it was almost like somebody was kidding up something, but it was like half yard cuts of lamb's wool linen with like a half a dozen skeins of Crescent Colors and Weeks Dye Works. And she said there were like 10 of them and they had a dollar a piece on them. So she bought all of them. 
So she got five yards of linen and a whole bunch of hand dyed floss for 10 bucks. She went back the next year. They had another whole bunch of them for 50 cents a piece. She bought them all again. So she said she has lamb's wool linen coming out of her ears. And then there was another story about somebody who found a cookie jar that she liked and they had $40 marked on it. And she said, will you take 30? And they did. And she got home and she found out it was worth a thousand dollars, which is amazing. But it was really fun to read about your, your adventures in thrifting. Super fun to see what you can find. Okay. It's that time to talk about what I'm all into this week. And what I'm all into, uh, even in the last couple of days is videos on YouTube about conservation of art. And I was just telling my husband about it because I think he would enjoy them too. Uh, it's fun to watch artisans at work. And I love art art. I like to go to galleries and things. I had never really thought about uh, how much work is involved in putting up an art show. And so there are all kinds of videos like by the Victoria and Albert Museum, by the Met, by the MoMA, by the British Museum, all these fantastic museums where they take you through in maybe five, 10 minutes, maybe it's a half an hour, maybe it's an hour of a, a painting or a statue that they have in their collection that here's the state it's in. It's very crumbly, it's cracking, it's peeling, it's warped. And it's like everything that they have to do to bring that piece of art back to presentation condition. And it really makes you appreciate. I watched one where they started restoring this painting in 1977 and they finished it in like 2009. And it was beautiful. Um, it was, uh, that was a tapestry actually. And it was enormous. It was like 20 feet long. It was amazing. It had been cut into four pieces. So it's just really satisfying to like see the process. And it just makes you admire those people so much for their patience and their work. And so now I know the next time that I go to a mu an art museum, I'm going to appreciate even more the artworks that are on the wall because you know that not only did the artists work very hard, but that there's a whole team at the museum that is working very hard to make sure that we can enjoy the art um, in the best way possible. Uh, I'm all into joining a gym. I joined it. Well, I'm in the process of joining a gym this week. I um, asked my son and he knew of some people that had gone to this local gym and I checked it out and I went. And uh, so the, the guy that led me around was very, very nice. Young, young man, probably 25. His name was Jake. Of course, his name was Jake, because if your name is Jake and you have a lot of muscles, you have to work at a gym. He was very, very sweet, very, very kind. Took me around, showed me everything. There's all these classes you can take. It's not terribly expensive. It overlooks a lake. So um, I went the other day and I, I, rode the, I rode 10 miles. And oh my gosh, I was like sore. <laughs> I was sore a lot of places. Uh, on the tread, um, not the treadmill, the um, stationary bike. Anyway, so he took me around, showed me where the classes were and showed me the uh, equipment and and all, there's they even have a, a place for women to just work out that's away from ogling eyes. So if you're embarrassed, whatever. So he, we got to the end of the tour and up in the front of the gym is where the dressing rooms are. And he said, okay, here's the locker room for women. I obviously can't go in there. If you'd like to go check it out, you can. And I went in, it was very nice. They had places to put your makeup on and toilets and showers and lockers and places to sit down. And they had a sauna and they had a whirlpool and there was a sign up that said no shaving in the whirlpool. And so I came back out and he said, what'd you think? And I said, it was really nice. And I said, I am gonna have a problem with the no shaving in the whirlpool part though. And he goes, what? And I said, yeah, there's a sign that says no shaving in the whirlpool. He goes, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. And I said, you know that if there's a sign that means that somebody did it. And he was like, oh yeah, gross. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm looking into joining gym. I would love to lose a little flab and just get healthier. Um, I just feel like I have so much more time to take care of myself now that I'm working from home and um, I can, you know, take a couple hours a week to go and exercise. We went and saw Isle of Dogs yesterday, the new Wes Anderson movie that came out. It was released a few weeks ago, but I think it was just a limited release. So we just got it in Hattiesburg. It was great. Um, Wes Anderson did, I think most famously, Royal Tenenbaums, Rushmore is one of his films, Bottle Rocket. The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Darjeeling Limited, The Fantastic Mr. Fox, um, Life Aquatic with Steve Jiju, all great, great movies. Uh, Isle of Dogs is a stop motion animated picture, but you do not have to be a child to enjoy it. It was mostly adults, but it's not necessarily an adult movie. You do see somebody's booty, which is kind of funny because it's stop motion animated cartoon booty. Um, 
there was a great story about how um, the dogs in Japan all get kind of shunned and put on an island because there's an outbreak of this disease. And um, anyway, I don't want to spoil the, the what the story's about, but it's it's very cleverly done. I would I'm gonna love to go back and watch it again because there are all these. I would forget that I was watching animation, and once in a while I'd be like, oh my gosh, how'd they do that? Because they're just, it's so clever. It's so clever. So if you get a chance, Isle of Dogs, um, see it with your grandkids, see it with your children, see it with your spouse, see it with your friend, see it by yourself. It's a great, great movie. I'm all into Tzatziki and Nan from Sam's Club. I love Tzatziki. It's like a cucumber, lemon, yogurt, garlic sauce. And Nan is a baked, uh, it's kind of like a, a grilled, like flat, it's, it's a flat, it's like a tortilla, but it's thicker. It's like a flatbread with bubbles in it. And um, you can get it now at Sam's Club. The tzatziki is made by Sabra, which is, there. they also make, what's it called? It's made from chick uh, Hummus. Thank you, Harrison. It, <laughs> Sabra also makes hummus in a bunch of flavors. Well, now they have tzatziki, and it's very good. And they make, that you can get the naan in little, like, nonlets. I don't know what they call them. They're, like, little tiny naans. And then they have bigger naans. And it's just kind of a nice snack. So I'm all into that. Okay, last thing that I'm all into this week is the five love languages. And this isn't necessarily something I'm into just this week. It's something, I read this book probably 15 years ago. And I think his last name is Campbell. And there are a whole bunch of iterations of this idea now. You can find the five love languages for military members, for mothers, whatever. The idea is very simple. The book is easy to read. So if you can find the, you know, an original copy of just the regular, the five love languages, it's very helpful. But the idea is that everybody has ways that they show their love and care for other people. And sometimes we don't appreciate each other because we don't speak the same love language. And the love languages are, um, everybody has kind of a primary way of showing love. So like for me, I like helping people. I'm kind of an acts of service person. And so I will make food, I will, you know, do housework. I will give advice. I will do tutorials on YouTube. That's how I share my love with the world and with the people that I know is that I do things to help you. Um, let's see. There, words of encouragement is another way. So those are going to be people that are always like, you look great today. I so appreciate you. You know, you're a wonderful person. People who just are verbally always telling you nice things. Um, there are people that spend time with other people. So this is somebody who shows their love by just wanting to be with you. Let's play cards. Let's watch a movie together. Do you want to take a walk? That kind of a thing. Um, affection, uh, physical affection. So these are going to be people who are like, give you a kiss, give you a hug, um, hold your hand. They want to sit right up next to you. People who really just want to be physically close to you. And then the last of the five love languages is um, gifts that, um, so this would be somebody who's like, every time they see you, they're like, oh, I saw this at the store and I thought of you and I picked it up for you. And, um, you know, people just that are very thoughtful, like on your birthday and at Christmas, or they just, you know, pick you up things out of the blue. So I think it's a good idea for all of us to know, to recognize like that we have people in our lives and you might feel like, gosh, you know, he never says he loves me or she never, I don't know, she never wants a hug. It's like, and you're like, she must, mm, I don't know, I don't know. Look and see um, where the, how that person might be showing you love. Your husband may not say, I love you all the time, but he may take your car regularly to get it serviced. And he may, you know, or he may bring you flowers or, you know, buy you earrings. They're just, there are different ways that we show each other that we love each other. And it's good to know that, there are, that those differences exist and then just learn to see that in each other. That's the whole idea of the book. But the reason I bring it up is that I got some stitchy kindness. And to me, stitchy kindness, that's just you showing me your love. And I appreciate that. This is from Lisa K. And I don't know if she made the card. I think she probably did. It's very, very nice. And she said some very nice things. And she made me this book. And she said that she's taught a few classes on how to make this. And I think it's really clever because it's got this, this elastic band around it with some pretty embellishments. And there's like a grommet in the middle there, or there's multiple grommets and it's covered with fabric. And then she put pages in, how cool is that? And I think there may be like hand, like antiqued or whatever, cause none of them are really quite the same. 
And I just think it's so neat. And so she said, you know, just use it for what you want. You can use it as a journal or use it to keep track of things. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna use it for. Um, my friend Jennifer and I though have talked about, we go out to lunch once a week and we've talked about starting a lunch journal where it's like, what's the date? Where did we go? What did we talk about? What's going on? That kind of thing. Just And just as a record of our time together. And so I may use it for that. I think that would be really cool. And um, so thank you so much, Lisa. That was very, very kind of you. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate the love. Very, very nice. All right, guys. That's what I'm all into this week. Cheap and cheerful. Started it last week with painting your toenails. I hope everybody painted your toenails. I'm not going to show you my toenails because I have ugly toes. But after I made the challenge for you to paint your toenails last week, I thought, you know what? We're, we're going to do this cheap and cheerful idea because we're a community. And let's do something once a week together that's not expensive or maybe like costs nothing at all. And we all do it together because friends do things together. And we're going to take it to Instagram. And so we're going to go to hashtag KSCAC is what you're going to post under. And that stands for Kitten Stitcher Cheap and Cheerful. KS. C-A-C with a hashtag in the front. And then that way we can share with each other pictures of what we're doing that week that is cheap and cheerful. So K-S-C-A-C. Your challenge this week is to go into your jewelry box and wear some jewelry that you haven't worn for a while. So this is, don't go out and buy new jewelry. This is cheap and cheerful, cheap and cheerful. So I've, I'm wearing a few things today. I have this necklace on that I bought um, from Kathy Barrick that is made out of antique pieces of French jewelry. And it has, I don't know if you can see, it has little pink stones, which I thought looked kind of cool with my pink shirt. And it's got this little antique bird who's holding a ribbon in his beak. And it's very, very cool. And I, you know, I was like, oh, I'll wear that on special occasions. I'm wearing it today because it's cheap and cheerful. I'm also wearing this pretty whoop, bracelet that my husband got me. I mentioned that I liked it. It was on Tiffany's. And he gave it to me probably 15 years ago. Someone um, that I knew had a necklace that was like this. And I was like, oh, I like that. Well, he bought me a, a bracelet. How nice was that? And it's kind of tarnished. And I could polish it. But I'm not going to because I like the way old silver looks. So I'm wearing that. And then this is my grandma's high school class ring. And so I, that makes me think of my grandma. And so why are you having all, you have jewelry with stories behind it? Why not take out a piece of it this week, take a picture of it on your hand, on your neck, on your ears, and share it at hashtag KSCAC for Cheap and Cheerful this week. Wear some jewelry that you haven't worn for a while. Who cares if you're in your jeans? Wear your pearl necklace. Wear your uh, diamond earrings. Wear your, you have a belly ring. You don't have a belly ring, surely. If you do, wear it. Um, how about like toe rings? Whatever you got, wear something that's just, hanging out in your jewelry box waiting for the, the light of day and just bringing that out and enjoy the beauty. I'm going to put a link here below too for a video that I watched today about the Victoria and Albert's jewelry room, their jewelry collection. It was very, very interesting. It's just a 10 minute video and it's just kind of fun to see all the treasures. And even with these wealthy kings and queens and things, jewelry, jewelry always has a story behind it. I mean, there are things we buy for ourselves but like our finest jewelry, our very prettiest, kind of most valuable jewelry has a story. It's not something that we, you know, buy at the dollar store. This is like stuff that's like has a memory. So celebrate that memory this week by being cheap and cheerful. Cheap and cheerful. Okay, stash flash. I haven't done a stash flash. Well, I don't know. I guess last week I did a pretty big stash flash because I went to the Lucky Rabbit. And it was so fun to take y'all along with me to the Lucky Rabbit. Um, People enjoyed it. I'll take you back. It was fun. Okay, so I had two things. Not that I, well, one I got this week and one I got a couple weeks ago. On eBay, I don't even know what I was looking for. I got some, so it didn't say Lakeside, Lakeside Linens in the title. I think somebody probably found a bunch of cross-stitch stuff at a garage sale or it was grandma's or something. So they just put light exemplar question mark, 18 by 27, 32 count. They didn't, they're like, I don't know what that is. I got it for $6. It was listed at $6 for a quarter yard. It's actually 36 count. That's fine. Um, so 
that's pretty cool because that's nice stuff. And they can always use light exemplar or exemplar. All right, then I got this on eBay also, and it was one I had, I used to carry and I never got a copy for myself. So I found this on eBay too, because I don't, I don't know that this one is available anymore. It's Carriage House Samplings, the Deep Blue Sea, and it's a punch needle design with a mermaid on it. And I just think it's really neat. I have her, all her other stocking patterns, but I didn't have this one. And I, I think this seller had like five of them available. So if you go look for this right now, you may be able to find this. And it, it wasn't expensive. It was maybe like $7 or something like that. So that's my very brief stash flash. Let's talk about uh, whips and finished objects. So if, okay, my friends and I are participating in a sampler exchange. If you haven't yet received a sampler from me, please stop watching because I'm going to show the one that I'm doing that's due this week. It's actually due today. I'm not, not quite done. I'm almost done. And it is, um, so go away. This is um, the Needleworker Sampler by Brenda Gervais. I had it in my stash. And this is actually for my friend, I'm stitching this for my friend Kathy. I had some of the linen in my house. I bought it at the Cross Stitch Peddler when I was there this last fall in 32 count. The original was stitched on 36, but I did it on 32. It's very, very pretty. It's all in sampler threads and weeks. And I'm just down to the last little bit. I've got the verse and then just, I have to finish the, the leaves and flowers on the vines. And then that's it. It's been really fun to stitch. The colors are very pretty. There were a couple of Valdani threads and I don't have any Valdani. So I just substituted some limited edition sampler threads that I had. I also didn't start it centered. I thought I did and then I went the wrong direction, but it's fine because I have plenty of fabric. So that's that. It's been fun to work on. I'll hate to see it go. I'll maybe stitch it again. It's been really fun to do. Um, I think that one is a relatively new, new one. I'm sure you can find that one online. Okay, I finished this one and I work the it's it's in process so this is the s ward old sampler that i bought for 25 dollars hey what you doing yeah don't yell at me yeah <laughs> so this is the s ward sampler you can see it's very very faded and um it's it's a cool marking sampler, but it's, there's not a lot of life left in it. It's very faded. And so I showed you last week that I was working on it. I finished it on last Friday night, actually. And here's what it looks like finished. I can't tell you how luscious this is. It's stitched in pashmina, 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 which is cashmere and silk. Um, Gloriana Threads is dying our thread for us right now. I ordered 1,300 yards of it. So she was like, oh, my Lord. But it is... I can't even tell you how wonderful this feels. And I wanted to finish it as not a framed piece because I want to feel it. <laughs> I want to feel it. It's, there's something just very wonderful about it. And so I think this is a great way to finish it. I may make a tutorial too on how I did the finishing here. It was not difficult. I used my sewing machine, but then I hand stitched around the edges to make it look like it was hand stitched. There's a little bit of cotton batting in the middle just to give it a little bit more weight. And I used um, just a row of antique buttons down at the bottom. Um, stitch with red thread. I like to leave the buttons kind of grungy. See, there's like dirt in there and stuff because I think that's really cool. So that's in the works. Um, and at Gloriana said it's going to take them a couple of weeks to get all that thread dyed. And um, the fabric is on the way from Zweigert, but it's a 32 count flax. But I guess now you can see too, like what the size difference is between the two they're pretty close to the same size. This one's thinner because this isn't this is an uneven weave fabric. So those stitches are are wider than they are tall. Yeah. But anyway, we breathed a little life into it. And so that kit, like I said before, is gonna come with the linen, the specialty threads, which are so nice. A needle, something that's made by me, and you'll see details later, and something that I'm all into. And that'll be, I'll be debuting my new website pretty soon too. And you'll be able to um, order these real quick. So if you're thinking you want to get this, there's no waiting list right now, but there will be soon. And I'll announce that next video, um, more details. Okay, a couple more um, finishes this week. This was a piece I finished a couple years ago. It is from a Blackbird Designs book. I baked and basted this 
and I was kind of, I really baked and basted it. And it's the cookie sheet that I put it on. I had as ridges on it and the coffee kind of pooled. And I like that. Like it made these little lines. And so I had the box. I already had this box just sitting in my, and so I did some finishing on it to make it look just kind of grungy and old. And I put some chenille trim around the edges. And then I'm really proud of the inside. I think it turned out really cool. I'll try not to break it here. So here's what this looks like on, on the inside. And I did post this on my Instagram if you, if you get my Instagram. But there's, um, I made, I had this old fabric that Shepherd's Bush had used in some finishing kits that was pale blue with the names of flowers on it. And I grunged that up too to make it look antique -y. Made a little pillow with wool batting and coffee and tea dyed it. Used an old button here to sew that down. And it's, this is actually hot glued in. This is um, scrapbook paper with birds on it that's kind of that also looks tea dyed. And I accidentally put it on upside down, but I actually, I like that. I like that. I like, I like boo-boos. And then this is my dad and baby Teresa. And I thought the colors were also kind of similar, just kind of that pale blue kind of, you know, washed. I think that's very sweet. And then these were, um, oh, what's the name? There's a guy on Etsy who sells these little wooden shapes and I bought them from him a number of times. And so I um, drilled a hole here and put this here with an old button for my button thing and an old German glass pin. Here's an old key. I sold keys one year at market. I collected a bunch of keys from eBay and Etsy sellers and sold them. And I have, have a few that I kept and I just put some old buttons in there too. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of neat. So that's, that's my little box that I made. And then just a couple more things. Um, this is from the Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day book by Blackbird Designs. Here's what theirs looked like here at market. And it really was one of my favorite little things at market. And when I got home, I was like, you know what? I'm starting that. I really liked it. It's not gonna take that long to stitch. It did not. I stitched mine on 40 count uh, fabric. Hand, uh, coffee or tea dyed, whatever. And I have this, sometimes if you go on eBay or Etsy, you can find antique or vintage or whatever, crocheted trim, yards and yards and yards of it for a couple of bucks. And I found this and I don't know how many yards I bought, probably 12 yards of this crocheted trim and I think I paid $7 for it, which was a deal. And I've used it here and there and everywhere. So I used the trim and this is all, I, I sewed the pillow, stuffed it with, um, sawdust and then hand stitched the trim all the way around and it turned out really cute and then I used this button down here below to hide where the um, crocheted trim kind of joins and meets and this here is bless you bless you you can come through if you need to okay this is a glass antique button and because um, I haven't worked with sawdust before and it was really hard to get it packed tight and then stay packed because if I pushed on it more, it'll pack tighter. So I really have to figure out a way to pack it tight, 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 tight. But this way by, by, you know, sewing it through the middle, it made it feel tighter even. And it just kind of makes it look really cool. Now the, the, this was one of my finds at, at a garage sale, um, noon hour filet of herring. One time in Fargo, I, I went garage sailing or I, I was in a neighborhood and I was like, Oh, garage sale. And I stopped. And I got two jars. One was just a, I think a Miracle Whip glass jar. And then there was this one, her herring jar that were, it was, each of them was filled with um, antique buttons, vintage buttons, but also seeds, pieces of broken glass, scraps of tin foil, um, pins, safety pins, little scraps of paper, just like miscellaneous. It was like a catch-all. It was mainly buttons. And I paid, you know, like a couple dollars per jar, I think. And then I went home and I dumped it all out on cookie sheets and spent my Saturday picking through it and picking out all the buttons and just looking at what I got. And I've used these for years. I, gosh, I got this probably 15 or 16 years ago. And when I find other antique buttons or findings or whatever, I put them in here too. And so it's fun for me, like when I have a project like this, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna, or even this, even this one this little button that was in here. When I have something, it's like, okay, I need a button. I dump it out and I pick through it and I'm like, which one, which button is gonna look just right? And I did the same actually with, um, <laughs> I used them three times this week. With this, all these buttons down here at the bottom, those were all buttons from my fancy button jar. So that's fun. 
Okay, um, my friends and I did a pincushion exchange a while back, and Sue recently challenged Jennifer and I to go ahead and share our pincushions that we gave each other, except we had never finished ours. We stitched them, we just never finished them. And so um, Jennifer and I, that finally last week I was like, okay, we just gotta finish those, this is terrible, it's been like two years. So I finished mine, and she finished hers, and this is the one she gave me. And I think she said it came from that punch, punch primitive, punch needle, you know, that magazine. And it's so cute, look at the little rabbits. And she got this really cool metal tray at Hobby Lobby a few years back. And it turned out so, so cute. And so I finished my pincushion for her, but I filmed it last week before I gave it to her. So here's the video right here of the pincushion. Okay. This is just gonna be really quick because I have to get going pretty soon, but I wanted to show you something that I made for Jennifer. Um, she and I belong to these exchanges with our friends Sue and Kathy, and we did this pincushion exchange, and Sue has talked about it on her channel. And she was like, oh, I think Teresa and Jennifer should show on their, on their uh, channels their pincushions. And here's the thing. Jennifer and I never exchanged pen cushions. We finished them. We finished the stitching part in time, but we never did the finishing. And so then I was feeling really guilty and I was like, Jennifer, we really need to finish those up. There's just no excuse. And both of us did it. So neither one, it wasn't like just one of us gapped it out or whatever. So she gave me mine and I'll show it in the video sometime, but um, I, I'm going to deliver hers to her. She ordered some charts for me and I'm meeting her at Panera for um, a quick bite and to give her her charts. And so this is what I made for her. It is a Stacy Nash, I think it's called like Colonial Pin Keep Drum, Drum Keep Pin Cushion, something like that. And um, it, it's just in DMC and I just did it on, I think like a 32 count natural linen. And I'll just spin it here. And then you make a, a wool berry or two for the top. It said to do two, I just did one. And um, it was actually a berry that I had already made, but then I, I did these, um, German glass head antique pins and stuck them through some buttons, some old buttons and a little scrap of crocheted lace. And then, um, so I followed the instructions because Stacy has, you know, really good instructions on how to do the finishing. And, um, and there's even like, I don't know if you can see it. There's, you do like little cross stitches around the top edge. And I didn't, I didn't do them on the bottom. <laughs> I just did them on the top because you can't see them on the bottom. But anyway, so it's very, very cute. And then she says to, you know, like pat it with coffee or whatever and then bake it. So sometimes Teresa goes a little crazy and I just doused it with coffee, like super coffee-o-rama and baked it and it was pretty dark. So I was like, crap. Like you couldn't even see the design anymore. So then I took a washcloth and wet it and then I tried to scrub some of the coffee off and that didn't work. So then I was like, okay, I'm just going to soak it. So I like ran it under the faucet and this is filled with sawdust. So this filled with water and I hope it's not still damp on the inside. And I put it back in the oven and the thing is that there was coffee that had gone in. So then that coffee leaked out and it got even darker. <laughs> so I was like, oh Lord, I ruined this pin cushion. So last night I was like, I gotta fix this. So I put it under the faucet again and ran water on it and put soap all over it, like dish soap and scrubbed it with my hands and like wrung it out, squeezed it out. I rolled it in um, towels to try to squeeze as much of the water out as I could and then baked it and baked it and baked it and baked it at 225. And it's perfect. I love it. I hate to give it away, but those are the best kind of gifts because it looks real, um, it just looks old and dirty and grungy. And I used some homespun for the top that was a Blackbird Designs homespun. And I think it turned out really, really cute. Um, anyway, just sharing that with you. Um, I, I hope she likes it. Bye. I think it turned out really neat. I love it. It was hard to give away, but. She loved it. Okay, uh, that's everything. So that's that's whips and FFOs. I'm not gonna do a list of 10 this week because I have a, a longer list than that. Um, it's, it's getting to be that time of year, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for Stitch Mania. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna rock it out in May. I have never participated in Stitch Mania. And this year I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. I have about 30 whips, I would say. 
20, well, 20, maybe, maybe not that many, maybe 20. So I guess what everybody's doing this year is they're starting 18 for 2018. So the first 18, day, 18 days of May, we're supposed to start a project every day. I'm down for that. That's going to be awesome. So I went through my stash yesterday. I didn't do any stitching yesterday. I went through my stash to find 18 projects that I want to do. And um, I'm going to show them to you now in no particular order. I don't know what order I'm going to start them in. I think it may be kind of random. I do not plan on kitting these ahead of time. I don't think. I don't know. Well, I might do a few. I don't know. We'll see. I don't, I don't know what my plans are. Project number one is from this book called My Dear Hearts. And this sampler is lovely. And it would be fun to do that one too. But the thing that I really, really liked out of this one was this, this um, little heart. Let me see if I can find another picture of it. Sweetheart pin cushion. Oop. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? I think that's nice. I love, um, I love the color fabric on. It's on. It's not a big project. It's on... 36 count tango by picture this plus. So I got it. That's, this is the only piece of fabric that I think I'm going to have to order. I don't have any of it. And normally I would substitute except for that. I loved this on this color. And so I'm going to get a hold of Marilyn at picture this plus and see if I can buy some, some of that. It's very pretty. And I, I like the idea of, um, they did these, uh, it's stuffed with sawdust and then there's like a bead that she put beads on pins and pushed them in. I'm going to say like, I had a tough time tracking down sawdust. And I wanted some to do Jennifer's finishing. And I finally talked to people at a local hardware store into giving me a bunch of their sawdust that was just laying around. I thought you'd be able to buy it, but I, I guess you can't. So you just have to be persistent. Another piece is Victoria's Garden, a reproduction by Heartstring Samplery. I'm getting a little glare. I don't want to pull this out though. Very, very pretty in pinks and pale greens. I didn't pick anything Christmassy or Halloweeny. I'm just not feeling it. At least I don't think I did. So this one I'm pretty sure you can get on Beth's site on Etsy or fine. It's not it's not a um, an old pattern. It's on um, a hand dyed fabric with classic color works, gentle art, and weeks dye works, and that's very pretty. I don't know how big it is. Another one is Elizabeth Sheffield by the Scarlet Letter, which is one that I know a number of people have done. Bless you again. And I don't have the silks or anything for this. I don't know what it's stitched in. I've never even opened it. It's still in the plastic wrapper. We never get airplanes. How weird. But I think that's very pretty. I want to say Paulette Stewart stitched that one at one point, but I'm not sure. And speaking of Paulette Stewart, Autumn Fractor by Paulette Stewart. I love Fractor samplers. And um, I guess this one is a little Halloween-y. It's got a few little pumpkins on there, but I love the colors in that. And I, you know, like everybody says, put a bird on it, right? Love birds. Here's another bird. This one's by Brenda Gervais, and this was a new market piece, The Summer in Baltimore. And I want to finish it as this little tub thing. It's really, really cute. And do the pin cushion too. And I think I've got some ticking. I think I have some ticking. So that's another one. Um, this one. It was hard. I wanted to pick a needle print because I've never stitched one. I love them. I have a bunch of them. This is Martha Brady's Ackworth sampler. And it was hard to choose, but I really like this one. Uh, now, if her, her charts are very nice. You can find them sometimes on eBay. They're not in print. They may be available for download. They're full color. Um, the only thing that I'm going to change is that sometimes... Um, what she did is she used colors that would be similar to what was originally used and I like it to look old And so I may substitute threads that I have to make it look kind of antique and old This is one that I got at market this year too from the primitive hair called Miss Lynette Lynn Linen If I enjoy it, I think there are four three other animals. There's like a crow that's cotton a sheep that is wool and Something else that's silk I want to say I don't remember what the other animal is, but they're very cute. And she sometimes sells these paddles for them to go on. Let me see if I can come up with those somehow. I have wanted this chart for years, Birds and Berries by Prairie Schooler. It is one that they recently reprinted. And um, I, I had always wanted it, but to find it on eBay, it was ran about $45. And I just really wasn't willing to pay that much for it. 
I don't know which one I'm going to do, but I'm kind of leaning towards this one right here. But I'm not sure, and I don't know how I'll finish them or anything, but I think they're really cool. I wanted to make sure to do a prairie schooler too. Okay, and Blossom as the Rose by Blackbird Designs. The one that I want to do is the, is the reproduction, although everything in here is really just so, so pretty. Where is it? Okay. And this is a brand new chart, so this is definitely still available. They um, put initials relatives on it. And so I, don't, I haven't decided yet like what dates and initials I'm going to put on mine. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for that yet, but I'll figure it out. But I think the colors are really pretty, and it's all in Weeks Dye Works. Oh, and it's on a picture of this plus Velt. Maybe I'll have to get some of that too because it was really pretty, very, very pretty. Okay, so this one, In Friendship's Way. I got this when it came out and I loved this box and I don't think they put a picture in here of what it looks like open but it was really really cute and I liked it so much I even went to Hobby Lobby and got the box it was like $7.99 or something so I, this, these have just been sitting in my stash <laughs> waiting for me to get busy and do it this is just stitched on 40 count linen it will not take long to finish it all and I think it'll be really cute. I think the box is just, yeah, the box is just kind of plain. So I'll decorate it up on the inside. But um, that's a really cheap finishing, seven, seven or eight dollars. I probably got it on sale too. But there's that one. This one I got, I'm going to take this out because it's not going to be too shiny. This one I got recently on eBay, I think, last year maybe. And it's by Kathy Barrick. It's called Only One You. And... I think she says that it was like her husband had got her a painting, an old folk style painting of this sheep, which is what it's based on. But she added this up here and I just love it. I love it. So that's one of them that I'm going to do. Then Jennifer and I were talking about Kathy Barrett's Hawk Run pieces, which are amazing. And we each have a few of the charts in our stash, but we've never started one. And I was saying that I just have always felt like they're, it was kind of daunting because they're, they're large pieces. And so it's kind of a, it's a big commitment. But um, there are 12 squares in each pattern. And so we're going to start a hawk run piece on the 12th. So if you would like to join us and start a, a hawk run piece, we're starting it on the 12th because there are 12 squares in each one. This is the one I'm going to start, which is the Village of Hawk Run Hollow. And this is why I want to do this one, is this mill here. I love that. The verse is really sweet. I'm not super crazy about this part here. And so I may do something else there. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. But I love it. So that's that one. Then um, this one was new at market. Well, it was, this is new in the last year. It's one of the new Loose Feathers series, Sing a Song of Seasons. They have this original one at market and it's really cute and, and small. I tried to do a mix of big and small and medium ones. This one is one I had never downloaded, done a, you know, like a pattern purchase download. And so I wanted to try it because I'm going to, I think I'm going to be offering those on my website. But um, if you go to poppy, creativepoppy.com, you can pay to download Barbara Anna design patterns. And this is my, the printout on my printer. It printed out very nicely. Um, I have these slickies here at home, but um, I liked this this bird. I printed out another bird one too. I mean, I paid for them. I paid for them, but I think it's really neat. And that's a small one. I like it. Cute. This was one. This is um, Summer House Stitch Works, and it's a uh, an owl one. And I think Jennifer had it, but she just was like, "Oh, I don't know if I'll ever stitch this one." I was like, "I will." <laughs> so I really like just kind of the mustardy. Uh, mustardy and green colors. It's very, very pretty. And then I've got Nest Sweet Nest. This is um, by Just Another Button Company. I don't know if this is still available. I would imagine it is. How cute is that? It's a little black, fat, fat, fat blackbird sitting in a, on an antique spool, like the antique spools I bought at the Lucky Rabbit. And it comes with all these little cute buttons. And I've had this in my stash forever too. So I'm going to stitch that one. All right, I'm almost down to the bottom. And then um, this one is from Barb and Alma's Schoolgirls Workbook. I don't, I don't know if this one is available anymore. This is a really cool book because it's um, 
antique samplers from a museum collection. And so it's about each one. Now they don't, that one is so amazing. They, it's timbre work. They don't um, reproduce all of the samplers in this book, which is disappointing because some of them are so pretty, but it's okay. But they do small pieces of them. And so the one that I picked out is, I'm gonna cover this up. That's the one that I, I'm gonna do. I think that's real summary. It's, it's pretty, it's small. So that's what I'm gonna do from this book. And then the last one, number 18, um, I looked through my sampler and antique needlework quarterlies just quickly, just breezed through them. And I found this one and I hadn't remembered seeing it before. It is from the winter 2013 issue with this cover. And it's called 1836 Ann Hull Sampler. Oop. And I think it's really pretty. It's an Adam and Eve sampler. And it's got this really cool sun and moon motif here on either side. And I think the colors are really pretty and I love the deep viney border that the flowers alternate. And there are a few kind of wispy deer. I think it's really pretty. And so I pulled that one out too. It's got some eyelids, it's got some specialty stitches, which is fun. And so that's that one. So those are, that's 18. I am not beholden to those 18. If I change my mind, that's fine. Um, I thought though I'd, sh I'd show you the ones that didn't quite make the cut. I ended up pulling, I think, 24. Uh, this is one by Primitive Traditions. I'll pull this out too, because it looks like it's gonna be shiny. Hannah Boone. I love this, just that the border's right at the top and that it's really square and it's not, you know, kind of ropey and viney. That's very cool. Um, that's, I don't think that one's in print anymore. I don't know, I don't know. I know this one isn't. This one is Ida Nolt by Hands to Work and um, she doesn't design anymore, but look at how cool that is. I love the cherries and the flower is done in, I think this is satin stitch across, which is really neat. That one may go back in the in the pile. Maybe I'll do 19 and just be an overachiever. Oh, hey, the other thing that Jennifer and I are gonna do is we're going to, every day is cumulative. So day one, you start piece one. Day two, you start piece two, but then you have to stitch at least five stitches on piece number one. And then it goes on. So day three, you start piece three, but then you have to stitch at least five stitches on pieces one and two. I don't know. So if you wanna join us in doing that too, we're gonna do that. Um, really wanted to start this one too, the Mary Bars sampler by Stacey Nash. Um, this is the one that she cut the fabric too small and they had to attach a piece of fabric and I really like that. I just haven't figured out how I'm going to do that yet. So, and I want to think about it. So I didn't add that one. I'm going to keep these separate. Um, Little House Needleworks. This was one I almost started. The Marianne Meyer sampler. Very, very cute. Um, I don't think I'll stitch mine on gingham. I think I'll stitch it so that it looks more like this one. I even have some uneven weave linen, and so it might be fun to do this, this on that, have it look more like the original. Uh, this one is by Finger Work. I don't know if this is still available either. Elizabeth Seville, and it's, I think it's just one, two, three, four, five, six colors of thread. It's originally done in um, old willow threads, which aren't available anymore but it would be easy to sub out. I like the kind of carnations in the border. That's really cool. And the colors are real pretty. Uh, two more. This one uh, I paid to, oh no, I did pay to download charts before. This was, for, I downloaded from Needleprint and it's James Wilson's sampler. So this is a boy's sampler and I've never stitched a sampler by a boy before, but I thought about starting that one. Not this time, but it was fun to look at it. And then the last one that didn't make the cut was the My Betrothed sampler by Birds of a Feather. And I think that one's really cute. I love that horse with the long, long skinny legs. And look at her skinny, skinny waist and then wide skirt. And that one's real cute too. So those are the ones that didn't quite make the cut, but they're still, I'm gonna keep them out just in case I change my mind on any of these. And we'll see. So that was Stitch Mania. And we'll just do updates, you know, kind of, I don't know if I'll have any news next time, but of course, as soon as May starts, there'll be lots of Stitch Mania news. And I'm looking forward to participating this year. Okay, just a couple of other little things and then we'll wrap it up. I have a trunk show that is on the way right now to Needleworkers Delight in South Metuchen, South Metuchen, New Jersey. That is the place where you get the Zweigert fabrics. And um, they've got, they said 3,000 square feet of a shop. And so they've got, I think 15 of my pieces or so 
are going out to them and they'll be there for a couple of months. So if you're gonna be in that area of New Jersey, definitely stop by, you can see my pieces. And then the last thing that we've got to do is talk about the giveaway for next time. And um, I showed you earlier in the video this finish that I did with the crocheted trim that I bought off of eBay. And then this backing fabric is an old Blackbird Designs fabric with sampler letters on it, which is a really cool fabric. Well, I had bought a yard of it. So what I did is I packed up a quarter yard of it and then a whole yard of that crocheted trim. And I'm going to give it to one of you. And this will be the prize for this week. And so you, can, you don't have to use it on that. You can use it on finishing something else or you can just display it because it's very cute. And so the question this time is, what are your plans for Stitch Mania? And maybe you aren't going to participate. And that's you can just say, I don't plan on participating in Stitch Mania this time. Or um, I hadn't thought about it. Or maybe it's like, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'd just love to hear, like, maybe, maybe tell me, like, what is a piece that you're going to start that you're very excited about? Or have you participated in the, in the past? Just talk about Stitch Mania a little bit and you'll be entered. And then I'll draw next time at random for that... This, the fabric and the crocheted trim. And that'll be yours and I'll send it along. That's all I've got for this time, guys. As always, it's great to spend time with you. I super enjoy your comments. Uh, I love all the love and support that I feel. And it's just great to be part of the Floss Tube community. So until next time, happy stitching. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.